Hello and welcome to Musings by Amit Patel. On Quora recently, someone asked me this question: Could the programmer that I hire steal my idea? This is the challenge that a lot of entrepreneurs face. What if someone steals your idea? What if you do all the work of creating the idea or finding the idea, finding the market for this idea? and then someone else goes and makes a copy of it a very recent example philips lights they came up with a very novel idea where they built a light which fits into the bulb holder instead of making it round they made it just like a small tube light and they call it as a civil light now what philips did was they did a lot of advertising for this light what did the other competitors do they copied this light and they manufactured this light even before the philips light would come out in the market but philips was smart here philips had already registered a patent for this particular type of a light such that nobody could sell their lights to anyone i asked this to the fellow from where i buy all my hardware and i asked him why only philips is doing this like why don't you have any other company which is selling these lights and he said that a lot of companies build this light but philips has the patent and philips sent notices to all the companies so there are thousands of lights which are just there with the manufacturer but they cannot sell it just because that light was patented so people tried to copy this idea but they could not copy because of the patent that philips had filed now philips is a very big company okay i assume that the person who is asking me this question is an entrepreneur either he is starting out or it's a small company so how do you protect your idea if you are a small company how do you make sure that whatever you are building or whatever you are bringing into the market is not launched by someone else before you so i'm going to go over various steps but before doing that i need to tell you another story so a lot of people will tell you that oh your idea cannot be copied it may or may not be true yes you cannot remain in the fear that your idea is going to be copied and thus do not even do anything to work upon the idea that would be wrong instead you should work on your idea in such a way that you make your idea not copyable and today in this video i want to discuss that with you before that as i told you there is a very famous story that happened between Bill Gates the founder of Microsoft and Steve Jobs the founder of Apple there was a time when Bill Gates and Steve Jobs both were very good friends because Steve Jobs had come out with this concept of a computer a computer that anyone can use and Bill Gates had built a software program which would help people to use various things for example a word processor or a programming language like basic so there were different programs that microsoft bill gates had built and bill gates was also building software for apple computer so apple to computer was the most sold computer in those days and after that success steve jobs was thinking i need to come out with a new version of my computer but then he was thinking about what would be this version 
one day he visited xerox and xerox were building a computer for their in house use what stumped steve jobs is that in xerox he saw a small device besides a computer with which the user was training a cursor on the screen and using that cursor he was going into various different menus this was the first graphical user interface computer that steve jobs had seen now xerox was not into building a consumer based product like steve jobs xerox was just building computer for its own use and it was building this graphical user interface for its own use so steve jobs went back and he went into and built a team of engineers who would build the first graphical user interface computer that team started working on this particular computer then steve jobs invited bill gates when they had certain things ready and he showed a demo to bill gates when bill gates saw the demo when bill gates saw the graphical user interface bill gates was totally taken aback he had not seen anything like that till that date most of the computers were using a disk operating system like os all the computers use commands to do certain things and none of them could be used with a mouse when bill gates saw this he thought that he needs to build this graphical user interface operating system bill gates came back to his office he built a team that would work on the first version of windows but what bill gates did was even much different than any other entrepreneur would do bill gate clandestinely built the windows and released the version 1.0 before steve jobs could release his macintosh the computer with a graphical user interface this caused a big rift between steve jobs and bill gates steve jobs fought with bill gates and he told him that he had stolen his idea he even put a he even sued bill gates in which finally did not go his way but he sued bill gates that the idea was stolen from steve jobs bill gates on the other hand had just seen what steve jobs had shown to him and then gone back and worked on this now you have to understand that both steve jobs and bill gates at that time were very accomplished entrepreneurs they knew how to look at an idea and they knew how to work upon that idea how to build a team around that idea and get that team to build whatever products were required so the biggest thing that both of these people knew was how to turn or execute an idea how to turn that idea into reality and they were not doing it by themselves though they were technical to some extent but they were building teams around the idea and getting this idea on the floor so if you really have an idea that is really good if you have an idea that you think is going to be the next uh, business idea which is going to be blow away the market then what you need to do is you need to first become an accomplished entrepreneur you need to know how to organize first part is how to organize your idea in such a way that nobody can copy this idea and in this video when you watch this video till the end i'm going to to give you certain ideas by which you can protect your idea you can make this idea your very best idea okay but before doing that you have to understand that you have to become 
a good entrepreneur and a good entrepreneur the first thing a good entrepreneur knows is how to understand whether your idea is going to work or not a good entrepreneur knows how to build and manage a team a good entrepreneur knows how to call it how to release the idea and a good entrepreneur knows how to provide support so if you are a good entrepreneur you will have to think about all this but before we go into that let's focus just on the idea let's say you have a wonderful idea for a software here i think in this question harman is talking about a software idea that he has so i'm going to give all the examples of a software idea so let's say you have an idea of an application that you feel is going to be really good for the market so first thing you need to do is to identify one what is the problem you are trying to solve i'm going to repeat that the first thing you need to do is you need to identify clearly what is the problem you are trying to solve and second who has this problem like if you are building an inventory management software then inventory management software can be used by a shop it can be used by a store it can be used by the company spare part division somewhere so wherever that inventory is required there this software is going to be used so these people are all your customers and what is the problem you are solving the problem you are solving is that you are with the help of the software you are able to better manage the inventory okay let's say you are building a software for people who are in who are trying to lose weight okay and when you are trying to build that software you you think about okay i am going to give a weight tracker i am going to give uh, an activity tracker maybe i am going to give um, something related to diet okay so what problem you are trying to solve you are going to help people to lose their weight people who are not able to lose the weight with your application you are going to design something by which people can lose weight correct so what is the problem and who are the people who are going to use your product this is the most important thing if you cannot identify what is the problem or if you cannot identify who are your customers then probably your idea anyway is not going to work okay so there is no point in working on that idea right so now we will talk about protecting your idea so the biggest challenge a non technical entrepreneur faces specifically for a software application is how do you tell the programmers to build the software for you without disclosing much of the idea the easiest way is to first design the application on paper what you have to do is you have to clearly design what your but that will only happen when you are clear who is your customer and what problem you are solving i'll take a inventory management example let's say you are building an inventory management application and your uh, you know who are your customers okay it is going to solve the problem of managing the inventory and you know that it will be required for certain stores or it will be required for certain spare part uh, places whatever whatever customers you have identified so you know these two things okay now to build that inventory management solution what you are going to do is you are going to design this entire thing on paper okay you are going to think about one what is the data involved in this application for example in an inventory management application 
your uh, from where you are purchasing the stock that information is required to whom are you giving that inventory that information is required you require the information of the actual item okay then do you need to store this information just as the name of the item and the quantity or do you need to store is a name and the quantity and some different kind of quantities like the weight maybe the uh, size of the box and other details so whatever details you need what is the data you need to sit and think about the structure of your data okay so first you need to abstractly think what are the parts within your application okay what is the data you are trying to store okay that will give you the structure of your data so take a simple word document and start noting down okay who are the people involved within this application you know is there a customer is there a, a person is there a company is there an item is there a product is there is there quantity calculation is there a country is there state so whatever whatever are these abstract data uh, structures just put it in in a document okay put clearly in logical that if you are collecting persons data then uh, you say persons data and then you define the fields that you are going to capture like a first name middle name and last name of the person you are going to capture the address you are going to capture the pin code maybe you are going to capture the phone number email id whatever those details are okay then once you have this ready now start thinking how will be the flow of your application will the person who comes to use your application will he log in into the system okay so you need a login page once he logs in what does he see in front of himself okay what whatever he sees are there buttons is there a menu what what can he do with your application okay for example for an inventory management application you can purchase stock and you can ship stock correct so what is the process purchase stock what is going to happen what will be required to understand purchase stock so you can take an actual purchase receipt and see the data in that okay name of the company from where you have purchased this item name of the product how the product is described whether it has a, a code whether it has a description whether it has a quantity which is different whether it whether you want to track the rate whatever information you want to track you just think about that as your screen okay so every software application has two parts in it okay one is the event that happens that is uh you have certain buttons which can do something for example if you want to purchase something you click on a purchase button okay or if you want to store the customer's name or the supplier's name then you can have a supplier button and when somebody clicks on the supplier button it should take him to a screen where he can enter all information about the supplier and save it now this you have to come up with these screens okay you can use a word or you can use powerpoint which is very easy to design any screen or you can use tools like balsamic okay balsamic is a very good user interface tool which can help you design a lot of uh, software application it can also show you whether you want to design a desktop application or a phone application so you create this so you first create the data structure then you create the screens and you define every screen that you can think of then you go to the reporting part what are the reports you want to generate what do you want out of this application and just you can use excel to design your reports you can say okay these these are the columns in my report that i want these are the things i want to show in my application so you design the reports the report can be anything it can be a graph it can be a simple table it can be a kind of a pie chart whatever whatever different ways 
you want your report to be designed you go and design each report at this point you have not done any kind of programming you are just putting your ideas on paper you are just designing this application without actually writing any single line of code okay then what you do is then you think about the flow of application it's very important to understand how does the data in this application flow for an inventory management application the items come from a supplier they are put somewhere in a place called as the store in some certain location and then when they have to be shipped they are picked from this location and shipped to someone okay so there are so many things that are involved in this particular transaction but there is a flow to this a item cannot be shipped unless it is there in the stock an item cannot be in stock unless it is bought from the purchase so you create various flows of this application you just write it down you can write it in simple english how does your application flow when you have this design document ready to your whatever uh, detail you can put in okay then you start thinking about what is the benefit of this application why you need a benefit because when you explain this idea to someone you explain on the basis of benefit for example when fedex fedex was the first company to start a courier service which could deliver a letter within 24 hours when they did it they just said that we will build a system that will deliver a letter within 24 hours now they nobody discussed about how this can be done and everybody who heard this they totally rejected the idea nobody agreed that this was possible but the but the ceo the founder of fedex he knew exactly what he was doing and he has a he had a complete map of how he was going to make this work there is another company in israel and that the founder of that company he came with an idea that i want to build a place where it reduces the oil consumption in cars now just think about this and we, we, he went ahead and he showed this idea to many car companies nobody agreed to his idea he he showed it to one another car company and they agreed to this idea but it was not in a copyable form because he knew everything inside out about how he was going to make this idea work so you become so good at understanding your idea and how you are going to make this idea work that when actually you tell someone you just tell the person the benefit of the idea and not the whole idea now when you are hiring programmer you don't hire programmer to build an inventory management system you hire a programmer to say okay you have to build this particular screen and it should do this particular job you have to build this particular button you have to build this application with this particular flow because you have the entire design of the application you are the best person who can talk everything about the application in that scenario your application cannot be copied easily and maybe you tell someone that i'm building an inventory management application there are thousands of inventory management application but maybe you have something in your mind which is unique about your inventory management application keep that to yourself break it down in parts in such a way that you can build these pieces separately so that people don't understand actually what is your idea and while you get this programming so you when you start hiring your programmers you hire programmers based on what kind of technologies you want this programmer to build this application on for example you want them to build this application on mobile technology or 
uh, is this going to be a desktop application is it going to be a network application that much you will still have to go ahead and find out you will have to do your research and you will have to find out what is the difference between these application you should be the boss so you should know most of the things even if you don't know the actual programming that is required so when you do this your idea will become much more difficult to be copied and even if it gets copied it will not be as effective as what is in your mind so make your idea so detailed so complete and that and then break it up into parts and then you start distributing your part to your programmer for example let's say you you came up with a screen design you can give this screen design to someone on 99designs.com and you can say that just i need a ui maybe for a mobile app or a desktop app and people will bid for whatever uh, design they can think of and they can come up with a template then you can use that template as your design for your application so you don't need need to explain each thing you don't need to depend a lot on the programmer okay then on to the programmer you can just tell that this is the screen this is the design of the screen i want you to get this done and this is the data structure which i want you to get it done okay of course there will be challenges but they will be minimized to the extent of how detailed you can come up with your design and this uh, you can also software is a lot difficult to patent unless you're using some specific technology you can see that most of the softwares there are a lot of like inventory management there will be like thousands of company doing inventory management okay crm there will be thousands of company doing a crm application okay so there are there this this software copying a software is easy but it's not so easy you need somebody who has that entrepreneurial uh, guts to do that the second way you can protect your idea is when you are hiring programmers find out what is their long term goal if someone wants to become an entrepreneur then chances are they will do everything to become an entrepreneur and they may see that this your idea is working well and they may steal it but if you know that this person's aspiration is oh i want to become a senior software engineer after that i want to become a project manager which means he's looking at this as a job for him this is a job it's a comfort based thing so you have to balance this another way to protect your idea is to find a partner you can find someone whom you trust and you can make them your partner who is very good in programming and you can share this idea and you can say that look i will do all the operational stuff that is required to launch this product you do all the programming stuff that is required for this so you handle everything from sales to fulfilling the orders to support and other things and you let this uh, let this programmer friend of yours work with you on this idea that way if you have this person in your team then you will have a much better chance of taking this forward because you will have to think less about a lot of things that this programmer friend of yours can think so these are some ways in which you can make your ideas very difficult to be copied but i cannot guarantee to you that your idea will not be copied the thing is that you have to have some faith in your abilities that you are going to build this idea in the best possible way if your idea is really good and if you have really good if you have enough people who are who are wanting this idea then you can build a business around this idea and then you can have a good following because once you become the number one within your market what's going to happen is people are going to come to you automatically it's the way uh, 
people used to go to so- to microsoft for software or people used to go to apple for iphone is the way people go to samsung for a smartphone so that they they are the top players in their market they are all doing similar things but there is some kind of a uniqueness in each one's approach so that is what you will have to do the last thing i would like to say is don't be so worried that you never come out with your idea like if i was an entrepreneur and i had an idea i would be fine with discussing my idea with a lot of people just to know how good is my idea because as you discuss with other people you start working on your idea in detail and there are a lot of people who are going to say no to your idea and there are a lot of people who are going to say yes to your idea it does not matter what matters is how important is this idea for you and have you done all the due diligence required to make sure that this idea can make you the this idea can help you build the right business that you are trying to build okay so that is the only important thing i would discuss it with everyone and i would not be so much worried but yes i would take my own um, it's called prevention is better than cure so i would i would make sure i will do as much detailed study of my idea and try to build this idea in such a way that it's not very easy to be copied okay i hope that this video helps you i hope that you go ahead and launch your idea if if you need any help with uh, how to take your idea from just thought process to final execution stages then you can contact me on facebook or linkedin and i can help you with what are the steps required one thing is very important that don't just sit there and do nothing just because you think your idea will be stolen if your idea has to be stolen it will be stolen and why not get an idea out okay even if it is stolen if it does something good for the people so best of luck thank you for watching this video in this channel musings by amit patel i am bringing the best that i can so that i can help you with whatever i have learned in the 22 years of my experience while building a software company and then running a software company uh here are some ways on how to here are some ways on how to get the most out of this channel musings by amit patel the first thing you need to do is subscribe to this channel because when you subscribe to this channel you get notification as soon as i release a new video the second thing you need to do is share this video to your favorite social media platform because there are thousands of people who read and watch what you post they are looking for videos that can transform their lives and you are going to help them by sharing this video and also becoming a part in their journey of success the third and the most important thing is to leave a comment it is not important that you agree or disagree with me but it is important about what you think about this video and if you have any suggestions about the next video i should make here because that will help me craft my future videos for you please be gentle in your comments and thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching this video make sure you check my earlier videos and see that you have not missed any of my earlier videos stay focused stay rich see you in my next video